people to cross off your wedding guest list. <laughs> channel my name is Jess and I am a wedding planner in Los Angeles California so if you're newly engaged welcome to the community I am here to bring you all the tips tricks and advice on all things wedding planning so make sure to subscribe so you'll be tuned in the next time I upload a new video all right we're gonna divide all of these categories into sections so the first one is MIA family members who are the people that you have not talked to in years most importantly have they been a part of your love journey have they even met your spouse before I think it's really really important to talk about that because it's one thing to invite people if you can be able to pick back on a conversation you haven't heard from them in a long time but I think it's another thing that they're just being invited because they're blood and I, I don't think that that's right sometimes um, and to really really talk about that with your family members or like the ones that you're really really close with um, like your parents or aunts and uncles that you're super super close with that would know that family member a little bit more and to talk about it because if family members are MIA and they've been at MIA for years then why do you want them back in your life now after all these years you got to remember that this is your wedding not a family reunion so it's with you, your spouse, the people that you want there, your immediate family that you care about to be there, your friends and family, not a family reunion. Number two is friends that you haven't heard from in years. This is your chance to rectify, I guess, a relationship or to possibly like see, you know, hey, like I'm having my wedding. Do you want to come? Like if you really, really want to, to be friends with you again or whatever it is, but you know, it takes two to tango and it's a 50-50% relationship and friendship here. So if they haven't taken the time to respond back to your text or to call you or to check in on you and see how you're doing, but you're doing that, like it doesn't, it's not fair to put 80% of that effort into the friendship when they're only giving you their 20%. Um, I think it goes both ways. So if there are friends like that, then you need new friends. Like don't count on them to be there or to even invite them because they don't deserve that. You deserve better. So having friends that have been there for you through thick and thin and have been a part of your life with you and your fiance. Um, if you haven't heard from them in a while, then I think that it's okay. Just don't invite them. Don't do it. Number three is a good one. And I think this one, People feel obligated, work friends or colleagues. Like, do you have to invite your boss to your wedding? Do you have to invite people that you work with all the time, like at work? You know, if you do, I don't know what you do for a living, but you know, some people work nine to five, some people are self-employed. I don't think you have to feel obligated that you have to invite them. If you're friends outside of work and you really become like amazing friends, like, Think about this, if you quit your job today, would you still be in contact with that person outside of your job? Or are you guys just friends just because of your job and you know that you guys have to be mutual and you have to be like civil for your job, then that's not a friendship. So I think it's, it's really, really important to note that you don't have to invite your colleagues to your wedding. Next one is neighbors. Do you have to invite the people that you live next to? Do you like your neighbors? I don't most times. I, they don't have social media. I don't even think they're going to see this video, but yeah, most of my neighbors, I don't really like get along with them. And if you like, get along with your neighbors, amazing. You live in an amazing street. <laughs> and I don't think that you have to exactly invite your whole street to your wedding. If you talk to these people, like, let's do this just like work if you were to move out of your house or apartment today would you still be talking to your neighbor the same way as like a friendship because if not and it was just like oh hey how are you doing how are you watering the grass and all that stuff because it's like awkward if you don't say hi to them while they're outside too getting their mail or whatever it might be then yeah you're going to do small talk but outside of that like are you really really good friends then invite them to your wedding but if not like don't worry about it cross them off the list 
And the next one is kids. Now I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this because either you love or you don't like kids in the wedding. So if you're gonna make it an all adult wedding, then that will definitely help you on the budget. But if you truly care about having these kids at your wedding, then you know it's gonna it's gonna hire some things on the cost and the headcount and all that stuff. And so, you know, if you decided that it was an adult only wedding, then that really does help eliminate things. But I mean, sometimes you don't want to leave out kids and stuff. And so I, I really see both sides of both people, the way they feel that they do. And I think it just really is a conversation to you and your spouse to talk about. So if you are allowing kids, then that's where you can, you know, say like opening it up to a certain amount, like knowing like the kids that are gonna be coming and then them. So then you allocate like, okay, four people will be reserved for this family. But if you're not allowing kids, then that easily like cuts it out completely. And you only have two RSVPs for, you know, the, the mom <laughs> and the dad or the spouse or the significant other. So the next one is people you've never met. And then most importantly, the plus ones that you've never met. Like, I don't know why it's a thing where it's like, oh my God, I got invited to a wedding and I need to bring a plus one. Do you want to be my date? Like you're literally paying for someone that you've never even met for your wedding, but you won't invite that other person who you were like, oh, should they be a part of my wedding or not? But like you're on the brink of saying yes or no. Like, um, no, like if you haven't met that person who would be their plus one, then probably shouldn't have them like even have a plus one in the invitation and just keep it at one person can come. Okay, so the last thing is your in-laws friends or your parents friends and most importantly people you've never even met in your entire life. Because again, it's not their wedding, it's your wedding. So you want to make sure that the people that you're inviting are the people who are special to you guys and your wedding, right? If they've seen you grow up and they've been friends or family, they've been basically friends or family friends, they've grown into family, you know, and they're your parents' friends or your in-laws' friends, then they would want them there, but it's not their wedding. And I think it's like if they're paying for the wedding, right? Then, you know, you can get a few friends, but it should be people that you know, like you wanna be able to know each and every single person who's coming to your wedding, not like, who's this person at my wedding, right? So talk to your in-laws, talk to your family, talk to your parents about who they wanna invite and have that conversation with them and like, are they invited or are they not invited? Cause you guys should be able to make that ultimate decision. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys in this week's video. And if you thoroughly enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like, comment, heart, all of the things. And I will see you guys at the next video. Bye.